Hello there and welcome back to Outer Worlds. Today we're going to be reviewing the Star Wars Retro Collection Mandalorian in Beskar armor. First things first, if you are new to the channel then please hit that like button if you like what you see and consider subscribing to see future reviews first. Now with that essential ask put your way, let's get on to the Retro Collection. As I'm sure you all know this is Hasbro's 118th action figure line for vintage Kenner reproductions and brand new figures in that sweet retro style. Now this figure came out in 2022 as part of the second wave of Mandalorian retro collection and was the first retro figure to feature Din Djarin in his silver Beskar armour. With season 3 hitting Disney Plus right now, it's as good a time as any to get this guy up for review. As is the way with the retro collection, this version of Din Djarin shares a card design with the equivalent vintage collection release except with a big red sticker and fake hardware that we've come to know so well. The main image of Mando here is pretty grainy, but the orange name pill and window give the card back a flash of vibrancy. On the back of the card we've got various legalese in different languages and the name of the rest of the figures in the wave. It's, uh, it's pretty boring to be honest. Taking a closer look at the front vent and you can see how cool the figure looks already. I'm a big fan of the orange pill, Mando really pops against that. But enough of this packaging fetish, let's get him open. There's a little slot tucking his cape into the back of a tray, always like to see that. And as with the first retro release, he's packed with both his pistol and his rifle. So now that he's out, my first impressions are good. I like the proportions, I like the posture. It's a retro style figure, so you know what you're getting. It's just that some figures pull it off better than others. And Mando here, he, uh, he pulls it off well. I like the sculpting of the helmet, it does a good job of capturing the design in a simple style. The Mudhorn sigil sculpted on his shoulder plate looks good as well. In fact, there's a really good level of detail sculpted across the figure, from the obvious bits like his armour and gauntlets, through to more subtle details like the padded texture on the back of his upper arms. In terms of detail, this feels like a return of a Jedi era vintage figure, which is exactly right for this character. Here you can see the sculpted jetpack under his cape, which looks good. The cape itself is actually alright, it's not a super thick material, but it's much better than Hasbro's usual standard. It comes off easily enough, but you need to be careful teasing it over his bucket. This has a much closer fit than the cloak on the Retro Collection Darth Vader that I reviewed last, so just take a bit more care here. And here he is, sans cape, which we'll be keeping off for a look at the articulation. You know what to expect here. Mando's head rotates, both arms move freely, his legs can swing forward into a seated position, but then they don't really swing back that much. And that's it. Easy to play with, easy to stand back up. His cape then pops back on a little easier than it came off. He doesn't look bad without it, but it definitely helps to complete the look. And speaking of completing the look, Let's check out Mando's weapons. Let's take a look at the pistol first and you can see how Mando can hold this nicely in his right hand. It looks good here, which is fortunate, as it's really loose in his left hand. In fact, he cannot hold it left handed at all. However, he can hold his Amban rifle in either hand. It looks a bit silly if he holds it in a firing position, but it looks really good when he holds it to carry. I do wish the rifle could peg into his back for storage, but that's not an option. And that's because if we compare both Mando's rifle and pistol to the ones that came with the first release, you can see that they're identical. The exact same weapons from figure to figure, which being fair to Hasbro, does make sense. That brings us nicely onto a comparison of the two Retro Collection Mandos. Despite the similarities, the Beskar Mando is a completely new sculpt, even the helmet, and it's all the better for it. There's something very late 70s about the first release, and I don't just mean the vinyl cape. It has softer details from the newer version, not to mention the Fisher Price colour palette. The season 1 version is perhaps a hair taller, perhaps, but there's not really anything in it. The Retro Collection Beskar Mando is just a cooler action figure all round. Finally, there is no way that we can take a look at a Din Djarin figure and not show him next to the child. So first up here we've got the Retro Collection Grogu in his hover pram, which looks pretty good. And then here we have the little future Sith Lord standing on his own two feet. I don't love a Retro Collection Grogu figure, but it does what it needs to do, and these two do look pretty cool together. Overall then, I'm pretty happy with a Retro Collection Beskar Armored Mandalorian. He's a cool looking retro style sci-fi warrior bounty hunter, and well, that's exactly what I was in the market for. If you haven't got one already, but like a bit of retro throwback Star Wars, then you could do much worse than add the Retro Collection Mando to your collection. As of March 2023, you can still pick these up wherever Retro Collection figures are sold. Anyway, that is all I've got for you today. 
If you've got a retro collection Mando, then drop a comment below and let me know what you think of it. If you're new here and you've made it this far, then please do hit that subscribe button. The channel's just getting started and I've got more reviews and unboxings on the way. Otherwise, take care in those outer worlds, and I'll see you next time.